Hi guys, Mimi G here. So today, I'm not doing an entire sew along, but instead I'm gonna make some slight modifications or show you how to make some slight modifications to a pattern that we released not long ago. So we dropped Simplicity Vintage Pattern 8615, and it's a men's vintage overall and jumpsuit. Now Norris did an amazing job of working with Simplicity on modernizing that look, and he also filmed a step-by-step -step video tutorial, so I'm not gonna do it. But after I saw that pattern, I was like, that's kind of amazing, and I wanna make one for me. So I made some slight modifications to that men's pattern so that I could wear it. So I chose a size obviously a bit larger so it would accommodate my body, but also I made slight modifications to the collar. I narrowed it to make it more feminine and also a bit more modern as the pattern does come with the larger vintage pointy collar. And then instead of making a belt, I wanted to create an elastic casing as you can see in this picture of the finished jumpsuit because I thought it gave it a more feminine look, but it also looks great for men because Norris, of course, made the same jumpsuit in a fantastic tan color, which you can also see in this picture. Now we did do a his and hers, and I knew for sure that the minute I posted this on the blog that everyone was gonna ask me how I modified it. So I'm just gonna go through the various steps that I did just to add those small changes, but if you wanna sew this from start to finish, please follow Norris's Sew Along, which is linked in the description box below. And then when you get to the casing part, you can sort of follow along with me. Let's get started. Okay, so you're going to be uh, using an elastic for the casing. So a one inch wide elastic is gonna be very helpful for you to have. What you're not going to need is pattern piece number seven, which is the carrier, belt loop carriers, and also the pattern piece number 11, which is the belt. So you can set these aside, you won't be using them. When you are following Norris, you can just sort of skip that part. Now let's go over the modifications that you're going to need to do to the front and the back. So for this pattern piece, what you're going to need to do, and actually this is optional, is we're going to take in some of the side because I wanted it to be a little less boxy up here for me. And so what we did is I needed to cut an, at least a 42 so that it would accommodate my hips. I have a 41 inch hip. And so what I wanted to do was cut the entire piece because there's no waistline seam, right? So if I don't have a seam, I can't adjust separately. So what I wanted to do was at least make sure that I remove some of the some of the middle area, right, at the bodice so that I could create a little bit more of a curve but keep the waistline the same so I could create a nice amount of gathers with that casing and not at all affect the hip measurement, which I needed. So I have a piece here of what I cut out so that you guys could see what I was doing. So make sure to look at the measurements for your bodice and also for your hip measurement before you cut out the pattern to make sure that you're cutting a size that's gonna be big enough to accommodate the female curve. Now you could essentially just cut a smaller size here on the pattern. So let's say if you wanted to, you could cut a 38 at the neck, the shoulder, the arm, and even here, and then just grade out, which is that is essentially what I did. So what you do is, depending on how much you wanna take, and like I said, this is optional, so if you just wanna leave it the way that it is, that's fine too, but I wanted to remove an inch at the armhole, starting at the armhole, and then take in a full two inches right under where the pocket line is, okay? Because that's where the bust area is. I don't want too much fabric to be bulking up here for me. And then what I did is I just graded out about four inches from that waistline. So your waistline uh, marking is here. So about four inches down, I just graded into nothing so that I wouldn't affect this very much and I wouldn't affect, again, my hip at all. And then what I did was once I cut it out, I used the same exact piece to make the very same adjustment to the back pattern piece. So just simply grab your back pattern piece, lay it over the top, and then just trace out that modification. I did it that way so that I wouldn't alter the pattern. I wanted to keep the pattern intact, right? So I made the adjustment to the fabric instead after I obviously cut the pattern piece out. Now, if you went ahead and graded that full inch underneath the arm or however much you graded, if you took anything out of that underarm, if it was a half inch, if it was a quarter inch, if it was a full inch, whatever it was, you need to take it out of both sides of your sleeve as well. So just remember to make that modification. 
Now the other change that I made was to the collars. You can see there's a pretty big difference from the pattern collar to the collar that I used. Now this pattern collar is pretty uh, wide and it has that nice vintage pointy collar which is great and makes for a great look. On my body, however, it's just a bit too overwhelming. So I narrowed my collar. And as you can see, all you're going to do is you're going to take it out of the bottom. So leave the top alone, okay? No changes here, no changes here. You're just going to remove however much you want here towards the bottom of the collar. And like I said, if you want it to be a little longer, a little wider, whatever, so you could even make it a little narrower if you wanted to. But I found that this was pretty good. It's about maybe three inches from the bottom, from the point up. That's where I started to make my change. Okay, now this is optional if you're using the front pocket. If you're not using the pockets at all for, the, uh, for your jumpsuit, then you can sort of skip this. But if you are using the pocket, which is a great feature and looks really great, then you're just gonna need to make one slight modification to the pocket at the top and also to the pocket facing. Now this is the pocket facing, right? So obviously we would sew it here, right? Sew it here, sew it here, we would turn it under and then it would give you a really nice finish. Um, but since we're not gonna be using this to go over the, you know, where the carriers are for the belt, we're going to cut some of it off. So instead of cutting it off, just fold it. So I folded it down leaving just five eighths of an inch from the corner, right? So I just sort of fold it down, leaving at least five eighths of an inch here because we're going to be sewing that. Once you do that, you're gonna do the same thing, turn under at the pocket facing. So that way it matches up exactly where you need it to, right? Because that needs to match up. And what you're gonna be doing instead is you're going to sew and then sew across, right? So that'll give you a fully finished top and side for your pocket. Okay, so I have marked where my casing is gonna go. So obviously you need a casing if you're going to be adding elastic to the waist. So what you're gonna do is, I've already pressed mine, but you're going to cut a piece of fabric um, that is the length of the circumference of your waist Right, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to mark this in just a second. But so what I did was I cut it so that it's two and a half inches wide and then I folded under a half inch on both edges and along the front edge because you want it to be nice and clean. Obviously when you place it on the garment on the wrong side and stitch all the way around. So the way to place this in the correct place is to use the pattern as a guide. So what I did was I used the carrier markings as my guide, right? So the small dots here, this is where those belt loops, the carrier of the pocket would be, and in the back where the center carrier would be. I used this as my bottom marking. So where the three little, the little dots are, that's this bottom line. And then I measured up from there an inch and a half, right? So I measured up an inch and a half, and then I marked so I created my, both my lines for where my casing is going to go. Now for the back, you have the dots for the back carrier that was along the, the center back of the jumpsuit. So again, use that one dot, that little dot at the bottom as your marking placement for the back casing. And then from that dot, you're gonna also measure up an inch and a half. And that's gonna be your two guidelines for the back of the jumpsuit as well. Okay, so once you've measured the circumference, you're going to remove about an inch on either side because we're obviously not taking this to the entire center front. We're stopping short of one where that elastic is, right? So probably I would say about a half inch short of where your stitching is because you can't go all the way, like I said, to the center front. Plus that would be silly anyway. So once you have that in place, we're gonna go ahead and pin it and I'm gonna show you how to stitch along the edge and then insert your elastic. Okay, so I've got my casing and I've got my pins and so I have my jumpsuit right side out and I'm just gonna be looking at the inside. I'm gonna go ahead and place the nice folded edge along my marking. Make sure that the bottom edge of your casing is along the bottom edge of your, um, of your marking. And also make sure that it's sitting above your pocket, right? If your casing is over your pocket, it's wrong. You've made the, the incorrect marking or you didn't sew down your 5 eighths of an inch on that pocket. You want, it literally should be sitting almost just above it. So make sure that that is in place and then you're going to pin. Okay. 
Continue pinning along the entire bottom and then you're going to pin along the top. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and trim off. Okay, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch along the edge of one side and then along the edge of the other side. All right, we're gonna back stitch to the beginning and we wanna stay close to the edge. Now you're going to turn it over and you're going to go in the other direction doing the same exact thing. Okay, as you can see, I have my casing sewn down and you want to make sure of one thing. You want to make sure that your casings end in the same place, right? So close up your jumpsuit and make sure that your lines are matching up at the same place. You don't want one elastic up here and one elastic down here, okay? You know what I'm saying? So just make sure that that is matching up. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to grab your elastic. What I did was I measured around my waist minus um, one inch and then grab a safety pin, put it through one end of the elastic and then you're just going to stick it inside and then just push it along using your safety pin as a guide. Now don't let your elastic go all the way in, okay? So keep an eye on it. Make sure your elastic isn't twisting, okay? You want it nice and flat. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that my elastic is um, sticking out of my casing and I'm gonna put a pin through all layers to hold it in place, okay? Hold on to the other end and adjust as you need to. Now you can try this on and see if this is enough gather for you. Maybe you want a little tighter at the waist, maybe a little looser. That really just depends on you and you can make whatever adjustments you need to the elastic. Once you have it where you want it, then go ahead and pin down the other side and now you can go to your sewing machine and you're just going to stitch this down. Once you've done that, we can trim off the excess, but go ahead and stitch down and close out both fronts. Okay, once you've closed out the front openings, you could go ahead and pull the elastic and then just cut off the excess, right? And you're gonna do that on both sides. Go ahead and cut off any loose ends, clean it up, and you are all done. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please make sure and follow me on Instagram at Mimi G Style and follow Norris at Norris Danta Ford. And please make sure and hashtag Mimi G Tutorial so that we can see what you've done and we can tag and comment and sort of engage with you. Until next time, peace.